right, since my assistant can't figure out how to aim the camera at me, I'm going to aim that camera at him. Now right here, we have a straight edge along the brake face of this rear axle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to measure to the inside. Now, it just so happens that it's five and one half. Okay? So, we know that X is going to be five and one half. Now, the nearest object that it could possibly run into right here is the spring perch. Okay? And we're looking at the spring perch as being six and a half. So, if you're using... Okay? If you're using the 56 inch rear axle, our, our X is going to be five and a half, and our Y is going to be six and a half. Why is that important? That's important because that's going to tell you that you're looking at a five, uh, four and a half offset. Remember, we're going to shorten it by a half an inch. And a uh, four and a half outside. So, let's go back to the board for a second. All right, thanks. I'm done. There's a badly drawn wheel for you. Okay? X equals five and a half. Y equals six and a half. We shorten the rim by one inch on each side. Okay? We're going to have a five and a half inch offset. We're going to have a four and a half depth here and there. Okay, you with me so far, right? This isn't rocket science. Guess what? Rim is twin inches wide. See how that works? Okay. Now that explains the, the back. Now, if, remember, we have a number of different rear ends. The one I just showed you was 56 inches wide. Okay? They also come 59 and a half. That's a stock 8.8 .8 for a Mustang. 61 and a half. That's a stock Cougar or Tiber 1985 to 1988. That's the ones without the independent rear suspension. Now, we also have, believe it or not, a 62 or 62 and a half inch rear axle for the later model Mustangs somewhere around 1993 to 2004. And I'm not sure what years, but this is the one that has this brakes. Just so you know. Alright. So we have like four different types of rear axles we can possibly use. This is why the X Y method is good for you. Now, one of the things you can see is that when you're using this one right there, okay, you're going to have this point or the center point further out. There's nothing we can do about that. The only way you can make it more centered, okay, is to flare the finger out even more than it already is. And that requires cutting and fiberglassing and all sorts of neat, nasty stuff most of you guys don't want to do. But anyway, that is my XY method lecture. Now, one other thing we want to talk about. We want to talk about the front of the car. Let's go there. It is possible to do the XY method on the front of the car. However, we're going to do it a little differently. This is a roller tire. 
Okay, when we use the roller tire on the front, and we have this thing on the ground, let me make sure what size this is. Give me a second. I want to make sure that this is a specific rim size, and I can't read it because I'm blind. Uh, this is a 15-inch rim. So if you wanted to use a 15-inch rim on your front, you would use one of these 15-inch rollers. Now, what we do is very simple. With the wheel on the ground, we're going to turn it all the way to one side and measure it. And all the way to the other side and measure it. We're going to measure the distance between the closest thing that it could possibly hit. Alright? Now, I'm not going to worry about the top so much because it will be on the ground. But that's how you're going to get your X and Y. I'm going to tell you right now, without the wheel on here, that when this thing goes up, okay, whatever this wheel is right now, she's only going to be about two inches away from the inside of the rim. So most of the, the front, if you try to widen the front tire, is going to be on the front. Now, I'm not a big fan of wider tires on the front. I'm a fan of skinny tires because skinny tires steer easy. Alright? But that's how you would do it. 